everybody, welcome to the Tuesday live stream. So we got a lot of things to go over, so let's just jump right in. So the first thing, of course, the, the thumbnail on the title suggests, we're going to talk about Warren, excuse me, Elizabeth Warren, and her uh, challenger, uh, Republican John Deaton. Now, if you're not familiar with John Deaton, he is the uh, lawyer. He's been uh, pro crypto for as long as I've uh, seen him on uh, X or Twitter and on his YouTube. But uh, it looks like this is going to happen. And just this broke out uh, just this morning. So I'm excited about this. We're going to talk about what this means. So first of all, when we talk about Elizabeth Warren, there was a video we did four days ago. And we talked about how uh, Elizabeth Warren, Senator, had actually signed a document that allowed for Satoshi Nakamoto to be recognized and to be validated and actually have the American flag flown in his honor, his or her, who knows. And of course, when we talk about this, I, I just said, I go, this doesn't make any sense. This doesn't make any sense because Senator Warren is not big on crypto. Why would you do that? And of course, later on, it came to light that uh, apparently senators just rubber stamp this and they just sign like it's going out of style. And this was actually done without her pretty much knowing or probably the incompetence of, of her staff for not removing uh, this this document to actually fly the flag. Now, I'm not going to say that uh, everybody's perfect. I am far from it. I'm just saying it's just interesting how this all came about. So the video that we talked about, I said, this doesn't make any sense and it sure as heck didn't. So this just broke out this morning. And this is John Deaton. And he comes out and pretty much ex explains why he is running for Senate of Massachusetts. And it was a very, it was probably the top five best political videos I've seen in quite some time. And it really makes you think that, you know, he can do it. I mean, that's, uh, it's very positive. And he talks about, you know, helping people. I didn't know John was a Marine. So uh, I want to uh, tip my hat to him. I could have salute. John, thank you for your service to this country. Also, uh, lawyer, took on a lot of politicians or uh, to Washington and won many a case and also helped with the Ripple case to uh, bring it uh, to give the small spanking to Gary Gensler and the loss of the SEC. So when I saw this, I thought, this is great. This is fantastic. This is what, uh, of course, we need. However, and I'm going to, I linked, I'm not going to play this video. It's very good. It's two and a half minutes. I'm going to link uh, John's. Uh, X account, and you can follow him. And I and I would like everybody to support him because he really does need our support to get the information out there and go against Elizabeth Warren in Massachusetts. The problem is, as you may have guessed already, is that unfortunately in Massachusetts, they're not real big as far as Republican contenders. So John has a uphill battle. I'm not going to sit here and say that this is a, he's a lock to win this one. But uh, there is some wiggle room. But going all the way back, I mean, Warren's been there since 2012. She took office in 2013. Mark Eberle has been there since 2013. And we can just see over time that usually, not that it's even close, <laughs> Republicans don't really do too hot in Massachusetts. And this is going all the way back to the 60s when John F. Kennedy was a junior senator and then later became president of the United States. He was, of course, a Democrat. And we can, or, yeah, Democrat, as we can see. And going all the way back, it just doesn't look too well. So I put this out as, you know, hopeful. I'm glad that he's running. But it doesn't matter. And I'm going to tell you this. It's not like John has to win this one to score a victory for us. He doesn't. John doesn't have to go out there. Mr. Eaton doesn't have to go out there and actually win the Senate seat for a win for crypto advocates like ourselves, because it's all about education, right? On this channel, we try to do our best to educate people, to talk about the macro environment, to talk about why this will actually make a difference. And even in his, in his, um, in his um, political video that John put out, he said, look, I'm going to bring it to light, the corruption that's going on in Washington. Great. A lot of people say that. And I'd Pretty sure he can do it. Did a great job against Gary Gens on the SEC. On top of that, he's going to talk about, of course, inflation, crypto laws, illicit activities. And it's all about getting the information to the people. So he may not win, but a lot of people are going to understand just how ridiculous Elizabeth Warren's stance is and how she talks about trying to help people. But how much has she done for Massachusetts? I don't live in Massachusetts. I don't really get it. Uh, because I'm not there. So maybe if you're from Massachusetts, you can tell me why 
uh, Senator Elizabeth Warren has loved so much over there to trounce her competitors by 64 to 32% in the last runoff. So let me know uh, how that works in the comment section. But there was something interesting that she did put out, which was this. Warren for Senate. And she talks about, hey, she, you know, I, I get to... I mean, I got to tip my hat to her. It's a pretty smart play not to just, you know, dismiss it, but say, hey, someone run, run against me. New report for the Boston Globe indicates I have a Republican challenger considering a running against me in, for Senate in Massachusetts. And of course, this went out to all of her uh, advocates and all the people who follow her uh, via email. She said, this is a guy who just recently moved here, is prepared to kickstart his campaign with 500,000 of his own money and has been a big cheerleader for crypto interest. First of all, that's true. John has been a big cheerleader for crypto interest. I have been a big cheerleader for crypto interest. And the reason why is because it's all about equality. So I know that, you know, your buddy, uh, Gary Gensler, uh, he loves uh, to, to protect us, but what is he protecting us from? And I'm not going to get into the, the politics of it because this isn't a political channel, just kind of, it's just something to think about. And then the thing we, we should talk about here is, is a guy who just recently moved here. That's a pretty good play. It's a pretty good play to say that because that just makes her her followers go, oh, this is just some noob guy who just moved to Massachusetts to run off, run off against uh, Elizabeth Warren. That's not true. As a matter of fact, John Deaton actually went to, uh, for his his legal degree to become a, uh, a lawyer, it was uh, the University of New England. So he's actually from that area. Maybe he moved away or maybe moved some back, but he's been there for quite some time. This was, you know, of course, where he uh, obtained his, his legal degree. So uh, that's just a little bit disingenuous, but whatever. She says, ever since I began speaking out about protecting consumers from crypto scams, making that industry follow the same basic regulations as banks and all their financial institutions, the crypto lobby has put its target on my back. First of all, I don't know any other industry that's more regulated, quite honestly, than uh, the centralized exchanges. I don't know about you, but when I signed up for a Coinbase and Kraken and uh, all the other ones out there, I had to follow the same rules as the banks. They had to KYC, KYC me, AML. They asked me for my social security card. They asked me for IDs. I don't know what she's talking about, but uh, maybe I'm just dense. She goes, look, I'm not afraid, but this now means we need to prepare to compete against funding from powerful special interests, Wall, <laughs> Wall Street and the GOP, like your buddy, Jamie Dimon. Okay. So can you please rush a donation of 28 bucks or anything? Yeah, and it goes from there. So I have to uh, tip my hat to Elizabeth Warren for knowing the game. But uh, again, I don't think it's John that has to abs absolutely outright win. We'll take the small victories as John marches forward and educates the masses as to why crypto and digital assets are important, how it can create equality, and why the nonsense that is spewed by Democrats, excuse me, by Rep <laughs> by politicians uh, should be overlooked. Let me know what you think about that in the comment section. Again, not a political channel, so let's just move on. And... I thought this is a pretty good piece. This is from Crypto Slate. And they talked about how Coinbase is seeing major withdrawals and the hold the lowest confirmed supply since 2015. And uh, it looks like they got this from Glassnode. And I found this quite interesting because, of course, we all know the ETFs are going on without a hitch. Looks like the interests, uh, Fidelity, the Black Rocks, everybody else are really ramping up the buying, not they themselves, their clients, are ramping up the buying of Bitcoin. There's only so much that, say, Coinbase can keep on hand because they're gobbling it up. And when I saw this, I'm like, hey, that's pretty great, right? Since 2015. But I just want to remind everybody about on-chain analysis is it is what you make it. And it's like all data points. Let me show you something. This is Ben's website, Into the Cryptoverse. Links in the description, you can check it out. And what it is, is it's the same thing. Uh, that Glassnode put out, but it's supply held by exchanges. See, on this one, it only says balance on exchanges, total Bitcoin, Coinbase only. And it's true, Coinbase has lessened amounts of Bitcoin uh, since 2015. But if we take a look here, I'm going to show you all the other big exchanges, how much they actually have. And we can see that because I want to know. If we take a look at Poloniex, well, Poloniex actually had a massive amount that had uh, 136,000 uh, back in 2018. Now it has only 15,000. It's quite a drop off. Okay, you got me on that one. Huobi also. 
This is not going too well for me. Huobi also has a negligible amounts of Bitcoin. Bitstamp, same thing. I think it uh, peaked out in 2013. Jeez Louise. Uh, but yeah, quite low. I think as of February 19th, it's at uh, 19,000. Interesting. Bitmex. All right. Had a lot, not too much. Kraken. All right. Well, not the lowest it's been. Okay. Bitrex, also low as well. Bitfinex, now it's on the exact opposite. 9,000, you got 51,000 here. So all the ones over here, eh, kind of negligible. Gemini, I don't know who uses those guys, but whatever. They had 60,000, now they're at 40, 51,000. Ah, so 50,000, it looks like a lot, but they still have 50,000 Bitcoin. And then the big dog, still in the space, Binance, I believe it's still the number one exchange out there. Uh, they still got a boatload, so... They got 630,000 Bitcoin. So I know this looks great and people are excited. I'm excited when I see this stuff, but you got to take it with a grain of salt and be like, well, what's it look like everywhere else? Does that mean that Bitcoin won't go up tomorrow? No. So I'm saying, I'm just saying, be careful and, you know, look behind the scenes about what's going on. So that's good, I suppose. But there is one thing though. And I've heard this for, for quite some time, which is when Tether mints a boatload of, of Tether, the Tether Treasury, just mints Tether out of, you know, of course, of course it's backed up, you know, of course it's backed up by assets and dollars and all that stuff. I'm sure it is. I'm sure. I'm sure. That was sarcasm. Uh, when this happens, people will tell me that expect positive price appreciation or price action to follow. This just happened two hours ago. A billion worth of uh, USDT was minted at the Tether Treasury. I said, hey, the US has got the Federal Reserve and the crypto market has the Tether Reserve and we just got a billion fresh in. So will this actually drive price appreciation? No one knows. But I would like to just kind of follow this for the next two or three days and see where it is. Right now, Bitcoin over the last 24 hours is down 1.7%, but it's up 5% for the week. Ethereum is down a little bit over 24 hours, tethers up. Uh -huh. And then across the board, it's not like massive price action, but there is something about this. So again, let's follow this for the next two days and see if that actually pans out. If they mint a billion worth of tether, if that drives price appreciation or not, we'll see. But there's this one thing, Ethereum is up 12% for seven days. Look at Bitcoin, only 5%. Actually, I wanna show you something. If you denominate everything into Bitcoin to see which one's winning. I mean, appreciation, it's not about, it's not about winning, it's just about price appreciation. We can see that, uh, well, Ethereum's up six, Binance is up, Solana is down big time against Bitcoin. XRP, not really. Cardano was up 6% for the week. Tron is up four. Doge, Chainlink, Polkadot, Polygon's up six, but a lot of things are, yeah, it's like a mixed bag, in my personal opinion. But a lot of a lot more red as you go down here. It's just interesting to to note. So when you're trying to look like, well, how am I doing? Yeah, depends on what your risk tolerance is. But the thing about Ethereum, I found it interesting. I'm like, why is it up so much? Well, if you don't know, Ethereum is up 28% this month as a new Dinkin upgrade comes near. Scaling networks surge. And just so everybody knows, what this upgrade will bring is proto-dank sharding, which I think is the precursor to just sharding. And it will reduce data availability costs and address some key scalability challenges for, I believe for Ethereum. In short, it'll make Ethereum faster and cheaper. And then also price appreciation could also be because the US SEC uh, looks like they could potentially approve a spot Ethereum ETF to begin trading. Some people say it's 40% possible. Some people say it's 50-50. We'll see what it actually actually is. I know that uh, Hester Pierce from the SEC said, we're going to use, hold on. We're going to use um, precedent from what actually was from, from Bitcoin. So we'll see. But just so everybody wants to, if you want to dive deep into this, we actually talked about this on NFA Live about 10 days ago or so, 10 or 14 days ago. And Guy did a fantastic uh, video on it. Uh, originally, but he just dropped this new video and he talks about how Dinkin and the upgrade and Ethereum, how it's actually going to reduce some fees, but 
the different layer twos could potentially be pumping or will be pumping soon because of this upgrade. So I linked this in the description. Watch that video because it might behoove you if you are a big layer two investor such as myself and uh, glean some information from that. But I found it interesting that this is actually happening right now at this point in time. And the reason is because so many people have poo-pooed on Ethereum, like it's never gonna come back, it's just trash. Ethereum's, the, the fees are too high. I've been one of those people who said, hey, Ethereum fees are way too high and they need to do something about it, right? Looks like they are. We talked about L2s and of course, I'm a believer in, in layer twos. I think they could actually do pretty well. I mean, Arbitrum, Optimism, uh, Base, if you're so inclined to that, which doesn't have a token. But we, I had a discussion yesterday with Altura. Altura, if you don't know, I linked their company in the description. It is nothing, to, it's if you're a developer and you're trying to bring a web two game over to web three, these are the guys that actually want to talk to. And I talked to them because we're bringing uh, Flappy Bird from web two to web three. And don't worry, Flappy Bird is still free to play on, on web two. It'll still be free to play on Web3, but if you wanna do these four things, like own skins, upgrade new worlds, gamble or revenue share, then that's you, but it's optional, so don't freak out. And again, free stuff. It's all free, Web2 and Web3 is free, that's all you gotta know. But when we're talking to these guys, I said, hey, you know, we're looking to go with a specific chain, what have you heard so much? And they go, well, you know, we talked to all the different layer twos and everybody's very happy with what's going on. They're very happy with this Denkun upgrade. They're very happy with the way that things are accelerating. And they're very happy with actually building on most of these. Now, they gave me a couple of uh, names that I'm not gonna mention as far as layer twos that kind of suck, but the majority, and I was kind of surprised at this, the majority of what they were talking about are like, yeah, these developers are very happy from web two to web three, and we think it's gonna do very well. So that's just anecdotal, but I thought it was just interesting what they're actually doing in the background. So anyhow, let me know what you think about that as far as Ethereum and layer two solutions, I think it's good. And then lastly, I wanna give everybody a gift. I've been talking about this for the longest time, and I apologize, it's taken so long, but it wasn't up to me. It was up to CoinLedger. CoinLedger just dropped their portfolio tracking software which if you don't know about CoinLedger, it's what I use for my taxes. This will be in the third year straight I'm using them. It's a fantastic service. I run it all through from the time that I put all my stuff in, to the time I ship it off to my CPA, it takes me 30 minutes. I am not a fan of wasting time. I'm getting older. I don't know how many minutes on the planet I actually have. Time is more important to me. And it's actually quite cheap. It's like, uh, I think it's $99 for like the mid tier and like 200 bucks for the upper tier, whatever but they're bringing their uh, portfolio tracker for free and it'll, apparently it'll always be free. So we were talking about that, I thought it was cool. And I just wanna show you real quick what it looks like. Let me log in. This is a test account. You can do the same thing. And what's great about it, oh, let me verify I'm a human. Ah, sweet. Tax reports, portfolio. What's great about it is this, but first of all, you can track all your different uh, profits and losses across all your different wallets. And there's different, like there's a bunch of integrations, all these different uh, tokens and BNB chains, centralized exchanges, DEXs, wallets, blah, blah, blah. DeFi protocols, and even NFTs, but I'm not big into, but sure. Anyhow, as you move things across your wallets, it'll give you a P&L. And it'll tell you like, look, this is how much you're up, this is how much you're down. This is your tax harvesting, if you wanna do that. This is your taxes as far as it's going to be uh, long-term or short-term capital gains. It can actually register your gas fees, your trading fees, and all the protocols in between. And it's not just for the United States, it's global. So I'm bringing this to you as a free gift because I thought it was great. I think everybody should be tracking their portfolio a little bit stronger. Now, if you've got one crypto that you've bought and you've done like 20 transactions, you don't need this, I think you'll be just fine. But uh, this piece right here, let me show you. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Let's take uh, da -da 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 -da. the only one that I'm up, or actually this is a test account. So I'm like, man, my <laughs> I've really gone on the twos, I only got 58,000 on this thing. But uh, let's see. So like we go to Chainlink, right? And Chainlink, okay, it's in my Coinbase account. And I go here and I'm up. Hold on, let me go back. Right here. So I have 49.40 link in this dummy account, right? And it's telling me that I bought it for, my cost basis is 649. I'm 
up to the value is 929. I have profitable at 279. The question is, is this going to be long-term or short-term capital gains in America? If it's uh, if you're selling before one year, that's short-term capital gains, which is way expensive. If you're waiting after a year, that's long-term capital gains, which could be 10, 15, or 20 percent depending on your tax bracket. So we can take a look here. Okay, let's see, and I can see how much of this. Uh, well, I got one transaction. It's 2021, so I'm safe and I'm good to go. And then also it pulls over to your tax reports. So when you want to actually file your taxes, and no, this doesn't this doesn't go directly to the IRS. You have to generate the report and send it off to, well, if you have uh, any kind of software that you use, I just send it off to my CPA. But you can do that and it'll tell you like, this is your long-term, your short-term, is how much you got to pay or how much you don't have to pay and uh, makes it very quite simple. So that's what's happening in the world. If you like to uh, check that out and start to do it, it, to get all the information in, you just put in your wallets or just connect it to your uh, centralized exchanges. I personally just collect uh, connecting them to, to Coinbase. Then I put my wallets in. It's read only. And that's it. And then I was able to say, okay, I'm up, I'm down, and that's it. So that that's a lot of stuff. 20 minutes. Sorry. That's it for today. I try to make that as quick and painless as possible. Now, if you're so inclined, we'll do a little Q and A and go over all your questions. But uh, that is it for this piece. If you like today's video, thumbs up, subscribe, all that good stuff.